Okay, this is part two for the eighth grade review for test five. And we just finished this problem, and we should have come up with two square units. Um, I did show an easier way to do this than I did in class, which I will again point out tomorrow. Um, hopefully, some of you came out and watched this tonight. But yes, I will go over it again. Um, but for now, we're just going to go on, the, on to the next one. All right. This one says to find the perimeter of a right triangle, perimeter of a right triangle with a leg measuring 12 inches and a hypotenuse measuring 13 inches. Okay, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem for this one. We have a right triangle, so we can use it. It only applies to right triangles. Remember, our legs are the ones that are attached to this right angle. Hypotenuse is the one opposite that. So hypotenuse is here, and our leg can be either one of these. Let's call it 12 right there. All right, now our Pythagorean theorem for right triangles says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And our legs were the a and b. So let's call this a. Let's call this B. And hypotenuse is always C in our equation. You will be given this equation tomorrow. Okay. Now, we don't want to forget that we want to figure out the perimeter. So, once we figure out what B is, that's not the end. Alright, so let's plug in what we know. 12 is A, so it would be 12 squared plus B squared. So we're trying to figure out. And 13 for C. Alright, so we're trying to figure out b squared, or whatever b is. 12 squared means 12 times 12, 144. 13 times 13 is 169. So now we're looking for 144 plus what gives us 169? And to figure that out, we subtract 144 from both sides. We can see here we're going to get zero, so these cancel out with each other. And you're left with b squared equals 25. At this point we're saying, okay, what times what gives us 25, and it has to be the same number. Well, that would be 5. 5 times 5 gives you 25. How I found that was is I did the opposite thing of squaring, and I took the square root. So, square root of 25. So, we finally found B. After all that work, though, we are not done. We want the perimeter. This will be our short final step. Perimeter means distance around, so we add up everything. 12 plus 13 is 25, plus 5 is 30. So, we'd be looking at 30 inches. 30 inches for our perimeter there. I would say that's probably one of the tougher ones we'll see tomorrow. But, we can definitely handle it. Okay, simplify. Here we're going to use order of operations. We're going to start uh, with the innermost parentheses. So, 15 minus 12 minus 4. And innermost parentheses is 3 minus 1. So, I'm going to do 3 minus 1 first, and I'm going to get 2. Okay? Now this 4 is being multiplied by 2. So when we got 2 in here, this was 4 times whatever answer we got in here. So 4 times 2. We are not going to do 12 minus 4. Multiplication comes first. Remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Multiplication comes before adding or subtracting. So we got to do 15 minus 12 minus 4 times 2 is 8. And then we do what's in here. So 15 minus 12 minus 8 is 4. 15 minus 4 is 11. It helps to rewrite things and move in a vertical motion. That's what I do. I suggest you do the same thing. Maybe you don't need to. It just helps me out a lot, though. Okay. 
f. Um, express in exponential form. Here, uh, everything's being multiplied on top. J. Holmes, please dial extension 1100. J. Holmes, dial extension 1100, please. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, everything on top is being multiplied together. So we have four x's being multiplied by two y's, and then we're dividing by uh, three z's. But since everything is being multiplied, um, and we have the same base for x's, these are all to the first power. One, 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 one. So remember when we multiply and we have the same base, we can add our exponents up. So we've got four x's, two y's, and three z's. So we should be looking at number one there. All right, find one half times b times h when b equals 16 and h equals 4. All right, not much to this one. We're going to do one half times 16 times 4. Kind of like finding our triangle area, one half base times height. So basically half of 16 would be 8. 8 times 4 would give us 32. So we'd be looking at 32 for that one. Okay, moving on. Solve for x. Uh, one thing that we've been doing, you don't have to do everything the way that I do. So this was another option that I showed everybody. Basically we're looking at 30 equals 5 times something plus 10, or what plus 10 equals 30. Well, we know that this has to be 20, because 20 plus 10 is 30. So we know that 5x equals 20. Well, what times 5 gives you 20? 4 does, so x has to be 4. And if you're ever not sure if that's going to work, plug x back in to the equation. So put 4 in here. 5 times 4 is 20 plus 10 is 30. Okay, That's one way to do it. You could do it the more um, algebraic way where we would have said, okay, we want to keep these two sides the same. We're going to subtract by 10 on both sides. These will cancel out. You're left with 5x equals 20. 30 minus 10 is 20. Uh, 5 times x, so we're going to divide by 5 on both sides. Those will cancel. And you get 1x, or just x, equals 4. Okay. Whichever way works for you. Okay. Uh, trick we showed for this one here. Um, we're going to turn 1 into 7 over 7, since we're dealing with 7s. So really this is 7 over 7 minus x equals 2 over 7. So what do we take away from 7 so that we get a 2 here? Well, 7 minus 5 should give us 2. So, oops, this should be 5 sevenths because... 7 over 7 minus 5 over 7 would be 2 over 7. So we're looking at 5 sevenths for an answer here. Now, that's what x should be. Alright. Alright, I want to simplify this guy. This means multiplying. 2 fifths times 15 over 16. You can take the shortcut if you want. I can do some cross canceling. I know 2 and 16 can both be divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Uh, 5 can be taken out of both of these. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And 15 divided by 5 is 3. So 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 8 is 8, 
looking at three eighths. Um, if you would have just multiplied straight across, we would have done two times fifteen to get thirty, five times sixteen to get eighty. Um, you could have reduced this to get three eighths. So uh, either way you do it, you should be able to come out with the same answer. All right. Now we're going to simplify this one. I'm going to check my time here. All right, I'm going to have to speed up a little bit. So, two-fifths divided by two-thirds. Remember, we are dividing now. Dividing has a special rule. We are going to keep this fraction the same, two-fifths. But we're going to turn this into a multiplication problem by doing the reciprocal of this one. So those are the things we've changed. So now we have 2 over 5 times 3 over 2. If we do our little shortcut, 2 and 2 will cancel out. Divide by 2, you get 1 for both of those. 1 times 3 is 3. 5 times 1 is 5. 3 fifths. Could have gone straight across to get 6 tenths if you wanted to, but that would have reduced to 3 over 5. Right there. Yeah. This one I won't get into too much. Um, tomorrow it'll look more like this. All over two. This basically just means you're going to do your 3.5 minus 0 0.24 first. And you're going to get 3.26 over two. And at this point, it means 3.26 divided by 2, which will give you 1.63, I believe. Alright, last one here. This will be 0 0.13 times 0 0.13. Um, remember that doesn't mean multiply by 2. This means that we're going to multiply whatever is in here twice. So um, if we go ahead and do that, let's do it real quick. 9, 3, 0, 1, 1. Alright, then we add 6. Alright, we have to move this over one, two spots, three, four. So one, two, three, four. Point zero one six nine. Alright, that is our review. Hopefully you checked it out and are confident. And we will see you for the test.